WWE is a global sports entertainment phenomenon. One of the major reasons why they earned the tagline is because of their association with various other organisations such as Hollywood, MTV, NFL, NBA and other such industries where talent crossover is the norm and helps to boost the image of both brands. Celebrities making appearances for WWE has become a common practice over the years, but more often than not when a celebrity is seen in a squared circle, it's usually something that doesn't go down very well. I mean, sure, there have been some fun celebrity cameos and appearances in the past, like Arnold Schwarzenegger, Seth Green, Ben Stiller, Hugh Jackman, Shaquille O'Neal, and many, many more, while other celebrities have been involved in entertaining angles and matches, such as Andy Kaufman, Mike Tyson, Stephen Amell, Lawrence Taylor, Cindy Lauper, Mr. T, Floyd Mayweather, Donald Trump, and most recently, Bad Bunny, who have all contributed some positives to the WWE. Some celebrity appearances, however, have, have not all been as well received as those, shall we say. Many times celebrities pop by for an appearance or even a storyline and turn out so bad all you can do is cringe with awkwardness. So join me now as I break down my own personal top 5 worst celebrity moments in WWE history. Number 5, Kevin Federline. American rapper Kevin Federline, best known as Britney Spears' ex-husband, appeared on a number of episodes of Raw back in 2006. At first, it seemed K-Fed was just there to promote his debut album, Playing With Fire, but fans got much, much more than they bargained for. Federline was brought out as a special guest on Raw by John Morrison and Melina, who would go on to introduce K-Fed as one of Hollywood's biggest stars. K-Fed was all over the news at the time, as he was in the midst of a high-profile divorce from Britney. But he was far, far, far far away from being even a D-list celebrity, unlike WWE wanted us to believe. But who can blame them? They were working with Kevin Federline, they had to hype him up at least a little bit. John Cena would come out to help promote K-Fed's album with one of his own signature raps, before taking Federline out with an attitude adjustment. K-Fed would then challenge Cena to a match on the New Year's episode of Raw, which was accepted by the greatest of all time. For the next two months, K-Fed would appear on Raw, promoting the match, and had a few more segments with Cena. Federline even got involved in the main event of Cyber Sunday, which resulted in Cena being pinned by King Booker. When their match finally came to fruition, a beatdown by Umaga and Morrison would result in the rapper pinning John Cena. You could argue that K-Fed did well in the role and deserves respect for his constant TV work during a difficult period of his life, especially with it being plastered all over the internet, newspapers and magazines 24-7. However, he makes this list purely because the WWE Champion should not lose a match to a D-list celebrity for any reason. K-Fed's inclusion on this list is certainly more down to the booking than the performance of the individual. Number 4, The Jackass Crew. As you can tell by the actual poster, the crew from MTV's Jackass were almost a huge part of WWE television in 2007. It all started back in October 2006 when Chris Pontius and Steve-O made an appearance on Raw. The Jackasses were brought into the ring by the late Umaga, who gave them a brutal beatdown. It was an incredibly ugly and awkward segment though, as both men, particularly Steve-O, didn't completely sell the attack. Instead of being brought to the back, both men simply returned to their seats just moments after the assault. It was as if the henchmen on the 80s A-Team series would, would always just stand up and dust themselves off after being involved in near-fatal accidents. It was just very strange, didn't feel natural, and they just didn't seem a very good fit for two men who were constantly, constantly hurting themselves. Fast forward to June 2007, SummerSlam commercials began to air where it was said the event would be sponsored by Jackass. Allegedly put together by Shane McMahon, the idea was for several members of the Jackass crew to wrestle at SummerSlam in a handicap match against Umaga. I imagine with Umaga going over and just completely burying the guys. This would never make it to TV unfortunately, as the cast would back out of their deal with WWE, apparently because Johnny Knoxville didn't think it would be wise to appear on WWE TV so soon after the Chris Benoit tragedy. It doesn't end there however, as Johnny Knoxville would appear on Raw the following year because he wanted to see WWE's midgets. A little bit weird, but hey, who am I to judge? He was then beaten up in a really awkward segment with Beth Phoenix, the Great Carly, and one of those very midgets he was there to see, Hornswoggle. Knoxville would once again appear on Raw in 2010 to push yet another Jackass movie, Jackass 3D. This was the least awkward appearance of any of the Jackass appearances in WWE, but still not really worth re-watching. 
Number three, The Brawl for All. Now, bear with me on this one. You might be thinking, how is this a celebrity appearance or a celebrity cameo? But just give it time. The Brawl for All came about because during the late 90s, the UFC had started to gain massive popularity and notoriety. Recognising the potential opportunity to cash in, WWE decided to pit their toughest superstars against one another in an absolute car crash event known as the Brawl for All. The commentary team would repeatedly remind us that it was not wrestling, it was not boxing, it was the Brawl for All. WWE were doing their utmost best to say, hey, we're trying to be UFC without actually saying they were trying to be UFC. A funny story about Brawl for All is that the tournament was actually designed to be a vehicle to push Dr. Death Steve Williams to the moon, and interestingly, he was actually paid the prize money before the tournament had even begun. Nobody had ever expected that Bart Gunn would be as good as he was, and he would shockingly knock out Williams in just the second round, before going on to win the whole tournament. Fans at the event and the matches were often heard chanting boring during these uninspiring contests that, frankly, nobody asked for. So, what was a celebrity moment in all of this? Well, as a result of his shock win, Gunn was then booked in a match with combat sport legend Butterbean at WrestleMania 15. Butterbean was an acclaimed and well-known boxer, kickboxer, and MMA badass, so you would expect good things on the grandest stage of them all. However, the disappointing fight lasted a pathetic 35 seconds, was a massive waste of time, a massive waste of build, and did little to keep fans interested. Brawl for All is often seen as one of WWE's biggest mistakes, and the disappointment of Butterbean is a key factor in that. Number 2. Snooki to this day, the popularity of Jersey Shore remains baffling to many people, myself included. Somehow, a collection of stupid people pushing every stereotype of Jersey life became a huge hit and a worldwide phenomenon. Arguably, the breakout star, for lack of a better term, was Nicole Lavelle, also known as Snooky, the pint-sized, loudmouth gal with the over-the-top fashion sense. Despite how critics hated the show, its popularity was undeniable and was enough for WWE to latch onto and bring Snooki in for an appearance in 2011. This led to a fight with Layla and Michelle McCall, also known as Lay Cool at the time, where Snooki was often made out to be a bigger deal than the wrestlers, despite being a wannabe celebrity. This set up a WrestleMania battle for the ages, where Snooki would team with Trish Stratus and John Morrison to beat Lay Cool. Now, just, just let that sink in for a moment. Trish Stratus, one of the most important women's wrestlers of all time, helped to change the game alongside best friend Lita, competing in a worked match alongside a reality show pretender, and even letting her get the pin. It was ridiculous, and was a low point for women's wrestling at a time when it was already about to enter the gutter. Number one, LeVar Ball. What was this? Seriously, what was this? American businessman and reality star LeVar Ball and his basketballer sons Lonzo and Lamelo made a guest appearance on Miz TV in June of 2017. Everything about this segment was just so, so bad. Lonzo was becoming a Laker for the first time, the family wanted to push their big baller brand, but LeVar was loud, hyperactive, and for some ungodly reason, took off his shirt and squared up to the Miz seemingly for a real fight. As if this disaster of a segment couldn't get any worse, they stepped it up a hundred levels when Lamelo said the N-word during Miz and Lavar's attempted scuffle. WWE would publicly apologise for Lamelo's comments, as they should, but frankly, we all deserved an apology for just how horrific this entire segment was. The Miz would later reveal in an interview with Sam Roberts that LeVar turned down the chance to have a script as he was confident he could deliver the promo without any strings attached. Slam dunk? More like a caution for double dribbling on this horrible, awkward, difficult to watch all around segment and just... Uh, just go and watch it, please. Please. <laughs>